Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Aaron Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TV MALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Experiences are what people love the most about travel. That's why they love Viator. They have over 300,000 bookable experiences and something for everyone. Plus, their travel experiences have millions of real traveler reviews, so you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. One app, over 300,000 travel experiences you'll remember. Do more with Viator. Every leader wants their employees to live and work happily ever after. Thankfully, you don't need a magic wand or a fairy godmother to make that dream come true. HR, payroll, and workforce management solutions from UKG give you the tools you need to support and celebrate all your people. Make your fairy tale workplace a reality with UKG. UKG. Our purpose is people. We scavenged. We stalked. We did things. We're really ashamed of. Yellow Jackets, Showtime's Emmy-nominated phenomenon returns. There was some darkness with us. I thought when we were rescued that we left it there, but he brought it back with us. We hear the wilderness and it hears us. We hear the wilderness and it hears us. I thought you'd be more excited to see me. Yellow Jackets, new episode streaming now, only on Showtime, and now stream Showtime on Paramount+. Plus. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey, y'all. We're here for episode two. Casey Anthony, episode Casey two. Casey Anthony, if you're not pissed yet, you will be now. Mm. We're just going to get right into it. Um, we're covering the uh, the Peacock series, quote unquote, documentary, whatever bullshit. So here we are. Um, and we're basically doing like a little rewatch of it for you because we don't want you to have to go buy a Peacock to watch this so we're gonna tell you about it so we did episode one here we go episode two yep um so uh also you if you're listening we love it but also if you want to see the slides we're doing little slides and pictures that kind of helps describe what we are talking about and you can go watch us on youtube so check it out um we're starting off November 20, November 2008, five months after Kaylee disappeared. So this episode starts talking about how they believe that Kaylee is dead, but there is no body that has been found. Okay. And then they have, you know, Casey over here. She's on a beach. You know, she's just like a photographer now, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> She's talking about how she cries herself to sleep and she just cries. She's charged with first degree murder for lying to investigators. I mean, oh, she's over here on this beach. Her hair's blown in the wind. I mean, who is she? She's just living her best life. 
yeah there's little kaylee and just a little cute little baby her she's been found or the body it says although the child's body has not been found there's kaylee then we have our first jail phone call um with her parents her mom is basically saying that the entire country is looking for kaylee um and casey is over here and she believes that kaylee is still okay so that's what we have there she says the last day that she saw her she says the last day that i saw her uh is the day that she disappeared okay okay go so this is what got me because she's about to tell you are you about to tell them the story because she's gone through all this and so people are like what happened though like on the day she disappeared what happened what's your story like what's your recollection you came here you got to be telling us that part right Mm -hmm. and so she's crying i forgot why she gathered some tears at this point but she's crying and she does tell this her story of what she remembers of the day Kaylee disappeared, right? Yes. But you just showed a jailhouse story of where she's like, Kaylee's all right. Kaylee's all right, right? I know yeah. in my heart, like, I know she's all right. Yeah. But now she's telling her story. So what's the story? <laughs> so she said it was a normal night. She put Kaylee to bed. They had breakfast in the morning. Casey wasn't feeling good. She went and laid down. She closed the door turned the TV on. She brought Kaylee in. Kaylee laid next to her. She said she had been a light sleeper her entire life because she was used to someone coming in and opening the door while she was asleep. She so said she's that setting she, it up. she's setting it up. She said she was used to being on alert and that whenever Kaylee came and slept with her, she would put pillows up and she would put the, do- the bed against the wall. She had pillows up. So that Kaylee wouldn't like fall off the bed. Um, And she said that whenever she went to sleep at this time, she thought that she locked the doors, but maybe not. And she knew that her dad was home, um, but she fell asleep. Okay. And so she's basically, okay. All of that is what has been said in the documentary. This next Right, right here is my me. She's living in the same house with this man who she is now claiming has raped her over and over and over again. That's what she's insinuating. That's what she's saying. Uh, but she can't remember if she locked the door or not. She can remember all these other things, but she can't remember if she locked the door. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, why is she still living there? She she okay. refutes that. Remember, she says, nope. uh, "I don't. I well, I don't. I well." And would you remember if you locked the door? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I know. These are just my. These yeah, are just. This yeah. is what I'm thinking as I'm watching it. Yeah. I just said survey says that's a lie, but um. So then, so then she says that she's woken up by her dad shaking her and asking where's Kaylee where's Kaylee and that's whenever she goes and they start looking for Kaylee yeah okay so they start looking for Kaylee they look in the garage they look in her brother's or Casey looks in the garage looks in the brother's room looks in the bathroom she says she didn't have to look in the pool because right as she's outside looking in like her playhouse She runs into her dad, like, face-to-face, and her dad is holding Kaylee. And she's soaking wet. And she's soaking wet. Okay? And she says, she, she, I can see him standing there in her arms. Okay? Okay. (laughs) And... She, now she's, she goes through these angry face emotions. She says that, she says dad tells her it's her fault that she caused it. I don't caused what? I don't know what she caused. Uh, and Casey says Kaylee was very heavy and cold and she stared at her not knowing what to do. She said her dad takes her. So So dad has her, 
Then then Casey takes her, but then Dad takes her back and is like, she's going to be okay, and walks away. And she, I was like, wait, so you're giving all these specific details, but you, like, why are you not, you're, you're holding your child who's limp and cold and wet and you're just going to let your dad take the child and you're not going to do anything about it? Or call 911. Or call 911. So what she does here also is she starts talking about how she's like, he walked away and he walked through the screen doors and she starts giving all, all of these, these details. details. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is where I start getting some vibes. She's giving specific details. She just like this is this is Am- I'm bringing it up again because it's so similar Amber Heard vibes. Because when Amber Heard did her trial, she was like, I remember seeing the dirty carpet and I remember this like and so it's almost like you're making up these extreme like instead of saying dad walked through because she what she said in this documentary was like dad walked through the screen doors and this this is you should be like he like left and went through the door but the fact that she says screen door it's like those little things which don't which seem like and she'll say she wrapped around the palm tree through the path and through the screen door yes. and, you know, p- put the latch up on the door. Like, all these details that n- that does not even matter yes. to what she's actually saying, but she's overloading Yes, yes. non-important facts, s- hoping that people were like, oh, she remembers that and that and that. It has to be true. Yes. Who remembers, like, that she passed the palm tree? So... That's yes, like the signs of like board. It's it, that is what actually is borderline and <laughs> and histrionic personality disorders. Um. Ooh. And we're I think we're getting there next too because doctor says she had no psychopathic psychopath. Oh psychopathic yeah, because traits. they did the whole MMPI on her. Yeah. Um. Okay. So that's her story. That's what she remembers. She has never come out and said this so if you haven't heard casey's story it does come out in episode two that she was there when she disappeared she knew that her daughter was wet limp lifeless cold and then she lets daddy who she's about to tell us in her words how horrible daddy is she lets daddy take care of it yeah, because okay. because she was brainwashed. Brainwashed to what? Trust him? Not trust him? Or no? She says it's like Stockholm syndrome. Yes. She, that that even though he does these crazy things to her, she still has a um. Uh, what's it called? Like loyalty to him, and like yes, that's her dad. Like she been, wants to trust yes. him. Or yeah. Whatever it may be. Um. So that's what gets me is like you now you're telling your side of the story, but then you keep saying over and over. You said just in the jailhouse phone call, you're going to keep saying she thought Kaylee was OK the whole time. Yeah, I thought I thought even she was up okay. until I found the body. I thought she would be I OK. She was OK. Yeah. Yeah. Which the story you just told us told us is she's not OK. Like, maybe I would feel, if, if I had that story, and I said, here, and Dad says, I'm going to take care of it, I'm going to say, well, let's go to the hospital together. Take care. Or let's call 911. Or what does taking care of it mean? And so then I go out and then go home and call mom, call the house a thousand times. So that's coming up, too, is, like, she shows her phone I records. just can't get over the fact that how are you, th- how is the, all this going to happen, and then you're going to make up the story about this nanny. Yeah, Zanny and she—they barely even touch on Zanny the nanny here, and that was, yeah. Mm. Well, there's nothing to touch on after she admits she lied. I know. <laughs> but okay, here's friend, incarcerated friend. Oh, now what this story is her. Was this? Okay, you just did a story. Go ahead and tell about her because it reminded me of a story you just did. Go ahead. Oh well, Robin. I just was thinking that this. So 
this is another one of her friends who's not cute and who's not <laughs> think she has a pattern. Blonde and chunky. And I mean, I'm not whatever, normal looking person. But I just think that it's just she's just manipulating somebody else and she talks about how they basically write letters to each other because they're both in solitary confinement and the only way you can talk to somebody is by writing letters. So then they start, she's like almost like love bombing this lady. I'm pretty sure this lady would go down on her in a second or I'm sure or whatever. <laughs> she talks about her jail experience and how she has no one in her corner. And, you know, I don't know. This, this is, this is just this lady. This lady goes on to talk about, the letters and she reads the letters that Casey wrote her and just as how she's on her side and how they seemed authentic. And this is where Casey says, this is where her memories start to flash back. She oh, starts to remember yes, doors yes, opening yes. and doors closing. And this is how she describes her dad, how her dad would come in. Oh, first she's no, no, no. First, she, she tells the this prison guy that her brother used to come in. Yeah. That's the only thing that she confesses in these letters to prison inmate Robin is that her brother would come in and do these things. Oh. Is this the room? <gasps> this is her oh, description. Oh, hell. Okay. Now we go to this damn info, whatever, this cartoon that they made. They made, so they made like a cartoon. I'm yelling. They did this whole cartoon interactive whatever what do you call this? reenactment of reenactment it's a cartoon it's so it's so cringe so what it, so she describes it's this animated detail. creepy story yeah and it's like she's vividly describing her abuse like this is what she's like he slowly moved slowly moved my hair off of my neck which an abuse victim was never going to give details like that. Like, oh, he slowly moved his ha my hair off of my neck. No. She sounds like she's writing a porn, and it's real creepy, and that's all I got from it. <laughs> okay, so she's describing how she would be sleeping, and she would hear the door open up, and her dad would pull back the covers and slide in under her and then her his hand would go slowly up he would move the hair her hand would go slowly up the shirts around to her breast and just and then but she she describes it very vividly almost like a porn that's actually but how she that's what she exactly said th what what you just like said. a porn yes no oh i know yes yes and, and she goes into detail and she does this. This is how she. so many people are believing her because so many people had something like that happen in their childhood. So she's appealing to those childhood abuse people. Now, I'm not saying that's not, that has not happened. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence of if dad is an actual abuser. I don't think that that really has anything to do with Kaylee's death, though. I think she's trying to make it have something to do with it. Yeah. I think that a lot of people's ears opened up when she described it so vividly, and I think that she knew people's ears, like those dogs on the cartoons, mm -hmm. when, when they would hear something, their ear would yeah, like, pop up. And then up. they did it. Mm -hmm. And so I think she got some... Um, well, I'll tell you why. You're going to find out whenever they have her, uh, another person from her uh, defense team, that the mm, bald lady, mm -hmm. the black lady, the bald lady, who she is, she was a victim. A victim, yeah. And that also reminded me of Amber Heard because Amber Heard had an assistant who was abused and Amber stole that lady's story. So, Kate, to me, <laughs> Casey is stealing Somebody this lady's story. story. <laughs> yes, and telling it as her own. Well, the lady did call her bullshit on it. <laughs> I know. I guess well, she believed her. Yeah, I, and that's what that's the problem. Is like I think a lot of the people would believe a story like that because it's believable. But it's very believable. I'm I'm not a it's just victim of abuse, but I don't. 
think that you would go around being that vivid and explaining stuff like that vividly, you know? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, and she didn't go, like, did he just molest her? Did he rape her? She, like, she didn't go into detail of, like, what actually happened, which made me question it. Exactly. Like, when he got under those covers, yes, he moved her hair and put his hand up her shirt or whatever, but, like, that's kind of, like, where it stopped, where if you're oh. trying to make us believe that he's, like, this horrible... Yeah, because then did it because go, guess what? Where's the other details? Because guess what? Then you talked about how your brother did the same thing. Yeah, mm. but she forgave her brother. Oh well, good for her. <laughs> then we have the lady from the defense who we were just talking about. She's another part of the defense team. Janine Barrett. Janine Barrett. So she talks about how she was a survivor of sex abuse, child sex abuse. So my opinion is Casey manipulated her just like Amber Heard, which we just talked about. So basically you can go and you like, if you study what somebody does or study what somebody likes or study like Amber, like studied Johnny's book, studied his music, whatever. So this, I feel like Casey went and she studied this lady or just knew her past and just knew how to get, get to be able to like get to her heartstrings, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and you just kind of can figure out how to talk to somebody about that kind of stuff to where they will go and I guess defend you or have your back. Um, but she goes on to talk about, this is where she talks about how her brother abused her and her dad abused her from eight years old to 12 years old. Yeah. Then the psychologist gives, this is where we'll get the whole MMPI and which this test can be like, Swayed based on who's giving it or whatever. I don't know what you the gotta MM tell them what MP MMPI is. Well, I what is it? Oh, I mean manual. So basically, I don't I don't know what MMPI is, but basically, a psychologist came on and said. It, it remember, Doctor Drew interviewed him and was basically like, "Oh yes, yes, um, yes." How could she not fall on any of the? Scales. Minnesota multiphasic personality. It's a base a personality. It tests your personality. And so they're trying to see if she was a psychopath, basically. But the thing is, is like, and there was no red flag. She did not fall like in any of those categories, according to this doctor. Well, and that's the thing. Like in the Johnny Depp trial. Uh, oh God! <laughs> I, I, it, it, it it's honest, so funny that everybody had the same similarities too. Like I well, watched Megan Kelly. It is. Everybody was comparing. Amber it is Heard because like. To her. I've never heard of MMPI until I watched the trial. Mm -hmm. And that's when you hear because you have Dr. Curry over here, Dr. Muffins over here, who's this like beautiful doctor who's like you're everybody's mesmerized by. She's talking about these letters, MMPI, what the hell? And then you have Amber's doctor, Dr. Karen over here. <laughs> Anyways, basically, that's where these terms are like in our heads because I've never heard MMPI and then I'm like oh shit I heard of that one in the trial but apparently like it can you can read it however you want to read it I guess but Dr. Karen over here Amber she was like oh Amber just had PTSD and then Dr. Curry on Johnny Depp's side is like oh no she had histrionic personality disorder she yeah. had this she had this she was not just PTSD so I guess you can like evaluated it how yeah read, putting their eyes on it yeah which is why dr drew was like there's no way yes there's no way at all yes um so dad i have in my notes that you know she's appealing to people who were abused in childhood yes she brought up the brother thing right to just yeah. to get some more sympathy but then um she also brought up that because they were like how come you have never told anybody and she said that she tried to tell her mom about the brother. Oh, but that nobody would listen to her. Her mom said, oh, that's why you're a whore. Oh. And so she. Was that in the episode? Yes. Yes. That. Oh, so that's why you're a whore. So she knew right then and there she could not tell her mom if if it was a true. Oh, that's what she yeah, claimed. She yeah. was saying if this is a true thing, she knew right then and there that. That's how her mom reacted to her brother being appropriate. Imagine how she'll react when she, if she if she told her the truth about the dad. So that was her reasoning for not telling her mom. 
Um, also, she, people were like, so why, why didn't you call the cops during this time? And she says, I was just following my dad's instruction. Uh, my dad told me to act normal, to go about my normal life, that he will take care of everything. So she is blaming her dad for her going to clubs, which she also says, but I wasn't partying. People keep saying I'm partying, and they'll show, like, the picture of her boobs. She was like, I was promoting for my boyfriend. Boyfriend, <laughs> yes, yes. I was actually working. And so when they said, why would you want to raise your kid in a household with the, you know, with a man who did this to you? And she says, that's why I was working at the nightclubs and doing this stuff. She says, I was embarrassed about my job. That's why I lied about going to Universal Studios, right? That's why, because she, she didn't want to tell them that he actu she actually worked at the club, but she made good money, and that was her way to get yeah, her and, and her Yeah, because her parents out. were asking, like, why do you have this extra cash? Yeah. Yes. But that's her excuse for saying it was temporary. I was working to get me and my daughter out of that house because I, I knew what my dad was capable of. But then that's a lie because she says that her memories didn't come until she was in jail. Didn't come back until yes. she was in jail. Yes. So to me, I was like, wait, you're working to get out because you know what your dad's capable of. But then you just said that memories start coming up when you're in jail. I can't give up. Yeah. I can't give up. Do we have this guy, Cameron Campania, who is another roommate of the Tony Lazaro guy? Um, Tony Lazaro was a boyfriend, right? Yes. Okay. Was a boyfriend. And he was like, oh, she acted like everything was fine. Nothing was wrong. She was just help. This is what you just said. She was just out there helping Tony, like, promote and whatever. She, it just, she was, this is whenever she spent those 31 days at their apartment. Yeah. So, like, that's it just makes like, your how is your story even making sense if you're there at their apartment for this whole all these all this time uh, her excuse is you know what her rebuttal was to that did you not see the call logs of how many times i called home yes yes so that's her way of making that excuse why are you asking me that question anymore? I called home 45 times because I was asking my dad. I was concerned. I wanted to know what was going on. And he just told me, it's fine. I've taken care of it. Or she'll be fine. Act natural. And so uh, she's she's, blame she's pointing all these fingers to her dad. Like all of her actions are behind her dad. I mean, it does plant seeds. So I was watching the YouTube and they're like doing the rewatch thing like we're doing right now. And we're talking about how Casey is doing this like rear view mirror thing. Like it's real weird how they're filming this because they're filming it and it's like they're seat. filming it from the back seat of the car and they have her face in the rear view mirror and she's like looking at the rear view mirror, talking to them through the rear view mirror. And it's real weird and I almost feel like it's like done like this like cinematography thing where it's like you're looking back on your life or whatever and anyways it's just real weird but so she's talking about how what'd you say I just knew that I had to do what he wanted me to do so this is whenever she's talking about she had to do whatever her dad wanted to tell her to do yeah whatever her dad said so this is where she talked about she was doing whatever dad told her to do. She was basically a robot. She says she kept thinking that Kaylee was safe, which I don't know why she never called police. I don't know why she made up the whole Zanny the nanny. And she just, her dad was like, Kaylee's safe. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Blah, blah, blah. And she then goes on and she says, what that made sense to you yeah that's what they asked her that made sense to you why would you do that and she says she just she was made to believe um she said she believed that her dad kidnapped kaylee from her and put her through all of this on purpose like put her through all of this her it's all about her 
but she was still convinced that she was okay. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Mm-mm. It don't. So she's a very good actor, like very good actor. She she's, is actually a better actress than Amber Heard. She is. Yeah. And, but her story, like she's tried very hard to put the pieces together, but there's still like a lot of question marks and still pieces that like don't fit, even though she's tried. She, uh, she has a response for everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everything. Um, what else? Okay, then then we have the um finally the remains of Kaylee are found. Mm-hmm. So we have skeletal remains are found. Um this is whenever Casey kind of freaks out in jail because she's sitting there. Uh they they take her out of her cell. She's sitting there and she talks about how she can see it on the TV and then she starts like breaking down. She has her head in her hands and they she's like her. freaking yeah. out. Yes. And on uh, my opinion, it's because she knows she's caught and this they have like um DNA portions of the remains and I guess it says she Let's see, Casey says that she should have had an instinct, and then she's like, oh, I don't know why I didn't have this instinct. I should have known something was wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, look, she could still be alive. I thought there was still a chance. And it's like, bitch, you saw, you held your baby when she was limp. She was wet. She was not breathing. She was heavy. And you thought she was alive? The yeah, that's a, that's the logic. And I'm trying. And to also, if the... you want to go look at this video right now, I don't see any real tears. There's no tears. You go back to this one. I think one of her, the people on her staff, were talking about people who are abused. There's no tears. They tend to no. um, see none. C- uh, ignore the truth what's really happening Mm. because that's what they've been taught to do so that was her people's excuse for why she wasn't trying to acknowledge it that she's a child of abuse so again they're appealing to people who have been abused Mm. who probably have been taught to ignore it for forever you just go on with your normal life and act like it didn't happen so i don't know like it's it's all great rebuttals i think so, and, and by this time, she had already, I don't think we'd done it, she had already said that she'd already been a victim before. So, she's really trying to get um, sympathy, in my opinion. Because remember when we did the story, or like when it came out, it was like, who who to daddy? Who to daddy? She set up the boyfriend at the time, I can't remember his name. He thought he was the daddy for the longest. Finally came out, he's not the daddy. They asked her. Who is Kaylee's daddy? Because they tried to they tried to insinuate could your daddy be the daddy? So she was like, no, no. Yes, they asked her if her dad could be was Kaylee. Kaylee's father. Yeah, and she was like, no, 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 it's not the father. Kaylee's father. And then she told the story of her being at a party, having too much to drink, waking up, and basically she got raped. So this bitch has been raped by her dad, All the her people. brother, her baby daddy. I mean, this is Rape Gate 101. This bitch has got the golden twat. And so now she's <laughs> uh, so she's already a vic- she's she's a victim again. She's a victim again. She's a victim vi- living that best victim name. life. She's not trying to turn him in. No. Did he die? No. I think one of them I feel like, somebody I feel like died. one of them did die. But I mean, she's not trying to put him on, on blast. Like, no, she is she's gonna her put brother. her dad and her brother on blast. Like, I'm telling you, there's still something behind Kaylee's the the story of Kaylee's real daddy. Like that, she doesn't want to come out, so she'd rather make up the story about her being raped. Or even if that part is true. Yeah, she said she was at the party. She don't remember nothing. No, and I can see how if she's already told her. Well, no, no, no. Can't see it. Never mind. Can't that see part it. Out. <laughs> okay. 
So then we have, they finally, they find Kaylee. It's December 11th, 2011. Detectives talk about discovering the body. They find duct tape that was put over the mouth of us. Well, it's, it's at this point, it's a skull. Um, and it's a trash bag. It's dumped in the woods. Winnie the Pooh blanket. Winnie the Pooh blanket, which matches the blanket that was at her house. There was like, it was placed in this bag that had, came in a package to match the house, you know, just all these things. It basically, everything they find in the woods links them to the house, Mm -hmm. but the body is like just bones. Yeah. And then this, whoever the hell this is, Karen over here, she's yelling at everyone on TV. She's got the most, look at that Karen hair. That I, when I watch this, all I can focus was the Karen hair, but She's they're just basically saying that they are seeking the death penalty and this is a big shocker because you know they might have been well, able to convict her if they weren't seeking the death penalty cuz maybe they didn't have enough evidence this is just what I've heard around I some people say it was a mistake to seek the death penalty based on evidence oh well maybe um, I don't think that's it. I think we're about to get to the reasonable doubt right now. And it says it here in a minute. So this is whenever. So cadaver dogs, have we gotten there oh, yet? Oh, oh, mm, why did I have cadaver dogs? Okay. So during the, the sunfire that she drove, they did a test on some hair that was found and the sunfire that she drove. And they tested the hair, and the hair follicle basically said it came from somebody who came from Kaylee. It could have been either Kaylee's or Casey's. Well, but that the person that it came from was dead. So that ruled out Casey, obviously. It was Kaylee. Well, her, her team was saying that your hair follicles can do whatever it does to make it look like you're dead. For other Mm -hmm. things, like if bad nutrients or bad diet or just other things that can contribute to that. But they basically said her body had to have been in the sunfire that she was driving at the time. And so there's a lot of evidence to link her towards that that make her look worse and worse. And so obviously that body was in the sunfire and was dusted. But there was multiple cadaver dogs. Some of the cadaver dogs went off at the car. Some of the cadaver dogs did not. Yeah. So that posed a question. So before. what I what I found was that they talked about how the defense pointed out how the cada- cadaver dogs alerted the first time, but then the second time they didn't, which was big evidence for the defense. Mm-hmm. And it was because it was an inexact science. And then they start talking about the plea deal. Do we get, well, they start talking about the plea deal, but yes, it has to do with all the, Jose Baez, which is her attorney, goes in and talks to her and is like, hey, we have this plea deal and we can, do this and all you have to do is you have to say that you're guilty and you'll get 20 years and you have to accept the guilt and you have to accept the responsibility and that's when I hear she's like no fucking way yeah no way I'm not doing that I would rather spend all my years on death row I will never say that I'm guilty and that went over 17 more people (laughs) But yeah. that won over a lot of people, obviously her team, because they were the ones bragging about it. They're like, she was adamant that it was like, no way will I ever admit to that. Um, and so some people would be like, oh, is she that much of a narcissist that she's never going to admit she's wrong? Or is it that she's innocent so she can never admit that she killed her daughter or had anything to do with mm-hmm. killing her daughter? Either way, Jose Baez at this point knew nothing about the molestation. She had never told him. Somebody on her team supposedly told him. It was probably that lady who she was talking to about sex abuse. Yeah, the bald, the bald, the bald lady, lady. Janae, Janae, Janine, and so that 
But I wonder why she didn't tell him about that. If that was such a big moment, if that led to everything, if that was the whole reason why your daughter went missing, well, it was because you were abused. Maybe it's not made it up. So, um, s- before Baez, I can't. What happens first? Ha- Baez comes in, but then so does side piece Crystal come in. Well, so yeah, then we have this worst prosecutor in America who's trying to give her defense ca- or give her a case, which she's obviously who lost everything and she's terrible and don't ever hire this lady because she pointed out... What's her name? Linda Burdick? Linda Burdick. Linda buried a dick. I don't know, but... If I listened. I went back and I watched both of their opening statements. I watched Jose's bias opening statement and her opening statement. Her opening statement is like you're having. It's like suffer. You're suff. It's suff. You're suffering having to listen to it. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. It's slow. It's dra- it's like dragged out for over two hours, and it's not captivating. You go to Jose Bias's opening statement. That's for Casey, and you're captivated. And you're alert and you're listening because he's telling this whole animated story. She's not. So she, so she is, is what, yeah, this is what loses. The prosecution lost the case. It was a open and shut case to me, mm-hmm. to me, as far as who's guilty, who's not. She, her team, in my opinion, lost it for her. They just weren't, they just didn't do it. They missed a bunch of things. They focused on the wrong things, I think. And okay. then we have the trunk. So then... Um, then they go on to talk about some evidence about <coughs> the her car and the Sunfire, which was, was that what it was that she drove? It says, when I examined that trunk, I found 15 hairs. And there's a lot of weird stuff about the hairs, too. About... The hairs belong to a dead yeah. person or not yeah. a dead person. Yeah. Period. But I think what did it was the last two things that happened at the end of a trial. When you're part of a jury, you can't always remember every single thing, especially no. when they go days and days and days. But the ending is is it. So at the end of the trial, side piece crystal. Dad was having an affair and they found the person he's having an affair with. And they subpoenaed Crystal because Crystal, though she was very uncomfortable with this conversation, got on the stand and said that, you know, you get a lot out of men after sex. There's something about like when they spew on you or in you, they'll tell you all the secrets in the world, right? Oh. That's when you have a conversation with the man. And he told her that Kaylee died from a horrible, horrible accident gone wrong. Oh, what was this the accident? This is somebody, he didn't say the accident. This is somebody not bought in to really the case. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's screwing the daddy, but but she just wants to know what happened to the daughter. She's not for or against Kaylee, Casey. Then Jose Baez comes in because he had just found out that dad has molested um, her. Yeah, yeah. And so he didn't tell her about it. So Casey says that she had no idea that he was going into court bringing up this molestation story. And he, she said that he wanted her to have a genuine reaction when he talked about it, right? Jose Baez is good at his job. Jose Baez is good. So That's why he won. Um, and that, to me, the molestation... Create a reasonable doubt. The dad's even sketchier, right? And then, and then, the horrible accident. So we had somebody testify it was an accident. Then he brought up the story about the swimming pool, and the accidental drowning, and whatever happened after that, right? So that's how she got acquitted for the pro- for the crime. So to me, Casey would be winning. If she went along with that story, she finally came out and said, yes, it's true. She drowned and I feel so horrible. I don't know why I lied about it. I was zero years old, right? No. Then at the end of season, uh, episode, episode two, two, she s- negates the whole 
story that she got acquitted on. She says, there's no way, no how, impossible that Kaylee drowned in their pool because the ladder was up. I mean, that was her only reasoning for saying it, but there's no way. She was no so way. adamant, so adamant. She could not gotten in because the adamant because the ladder was up, but then they but in her story he she said Kaylee was soaking wet. So producers or whoever is behind the camera was like, "How do you explain her being wet?" And she says, "I can't." And that is my problem is I can't. And I'm not calling my dad an outright murderer, but she was cold and she was wet and he was she was also. He was also in the house, but he was not investigated. They didn't check his phone records. They didn't check any of this thing. Why was I the only one investigated? So that is her creating her dad to be even more of a monster. So now mm -hmm. he molested her. So what are people going to automatically think? Oh, that he murdered her, yeah. That Well, if he molested Casey as a young oh, girl. Oh, that he molested Kaylee, too, he's yeah. he's going to molest Kaylee. Yeah. And she's insinuating that something went wrong or he went too far you know it's interesting because remember he would put the pillow over her head mm -hmm. he put the pillow over her head sometimes to muffle her whatever moans so she's insinuating that could this happen to have kaylee she doesn't really outright say it yeah she's but wanting she's... you to put together of everything yeah. she told you to she's setting up her dad she's setting up her dad so that's where it ended and She's not, she's calling her, she's already called her dad a molester and a rapist. She hasn't outright called him a murderer. She's just talked all the way around it. Yep. So part three is when we go into how, like, she's really coming for the dad. Yep. It's bad. Yep. So, that so there is you it. go. There you go. Yes. I episode love it. Two. We will see y'all for episode three. Tell us what you think. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always. B D T F. Bye yo. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. At Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial-grade supplies for every industry with same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders, all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.